So yesterday we mentioned when disenfranchisement. The 14th and 15th Amendment had given African American citizenship rights and guaranteed them the right to vote. But earlier we discussed the black codes that prevented them from being able to vote and exercise many other rights. But then once the black codes were banned, many southern states began passing what were known as Jim Crow laws. And this is the segregation of the white restroom, black restroom, um, colored water fountain, white water fountain, that you, images that you could see segregating schools, hotels, restaurants, restrooms, everything. Well, there was a man named Homer Plessy that you see here. In 1892, he was arrested for riding in the whites only section of a Louisiana railroad car. And this would be kind of like the public transportation of the time. Now, Plessy was only partially African American, and even though he was only partially African American, he was, and he was actually very, very light skinned, it, and it would be difficult to look at him today and say, oh, he's got African American ancestry. But culturally, during this time period, in the and well into the maybe the mid 1900s people knew based off of your last name what your cultural background was and so they could tell that because of his last name what his cultural background was and communities were much smaller so they also knew about his cultural background whereas today we live in such diverse societies it's very difficult to determine someone's cultural background just by looking at them or looking at their name but they knew that Plessy was partially African American and so they told him to get out of the whites only section of the railroad car. Plessy sued in court saying this was his equal protection right and it was his 14th amendment right and he said that this was violated. The U.S. Supreme Court rules that segregation is legal as long as the facilities were separate but equal making segregation the law of the land. That is the big result of the Plessy case that you need to know is that segregation becomes the law of the land saying that as long as facilities are separate but equal it's okay. As we know this was not true. They were not equal. They were very unequal and later in the 1950s this is overturned with the Brown v. Board of Ed case because the facilities were not equal despite being and being separate. So it takes about 60 years before Plessy is overturned, but it is overturned with Brown v. Board of Ed. There were loopholes, and I mentioned these in the, Power, the New South Overview PowerPoint about disenfranchisement, ways to prevent African Americans from voting. There was a poll tax that would require citizens to pay a tax prior to voting, so this would eliminate not only many African Americans, but also poor whites. There were literacy tests that required citizens to prove that they had the ability to read and write before being able to vote. So anyone who could not read or write that was illiterate would not be able to vote. And they also made voter registration very inconvenient. They would have the registration sessions during crop harvest times, which was a difficult time for sharecroppers and tenant farmers to do, or during planting season. They couldn't come in and register to vote because they had to be out on their crops or they wouldn't have any money. So voting was not their priority. Now there were other tactics, the KKK, they, the, their violence continued to scare African Americans away from voting. There was also called the Democratic White Primary. Um, at this time political parties were private, they were not public. And so if you weren't part of the political party, you could not vote. And constitutional law did not apply to them because they were private, not public. So blacks couldn't vote because they weren't part of the Democratic Party. So that permitted, prohibited them from being able to vote. And the Democratic Party was the dominating political party in Georgia. So if African Americans could not go, were not part of the party, they could not vote, period. And then they weren't the Democrats just kept control. So by the 1900s, African Americans were disenfranchised. Their voting rights were being taken away. And again, this takes until probably the 1950s, 1960s, before some of the 
new laws began to be passed that say Jim Crow is illegal, that poll taxes, literacy tests, all of that becomes illegal with constitutional amendments in the 50s and 60s.